students. Welcome back for another topic in science class, ladies and gentlemen. And this week, we are taking our tour through the animal kingdom to the next logical level, which is to discuss this week all about mammals. So this week's topic is mammals. Be sure your books are open and you are ready to record your notes. And we don't have too many notes to go through this week, just today and tomorrow. So let's begin. Mammals. See, wrong there. Mammals. Here we go. Mammals. Here's a picture of some common mammals, elephants, kangaroos, cows, etc. All of these are examples of mammals. And we're going to discuss here briefly five characteristics that I almost said all mammals, but I'm going to say most mammals share because you're going to see an exception here but it is an exception and not the rule. So by and large, most mammals share the following five characteristics, starting with they're all vertebrates. We know from last week what that means, right? Vertebrates are organisms that have backbones and those other characteristics of vertebrates that we went over uh, a week ago. So if you refer to last week's topic on vertebrates by me just saying that being a vertebrate is a characteristic of mammals, then you know that all mammals share all of the characteristics that we discussed yesterday, or rather last week, regarding vertebrates. Second characteristic of mammals is that they are all warm-blooded. And hopefully you recall from last week that word warm-blooded is really a misnomer. It's not an accurate scientific term. So we use the, we use the term endothermic to refer to this characteristic. So all mammals are endothermic, which means that they maintain their own body temperature from within. Remember the prefix endo means inside. Thermic refers to heat, energy, or temperature. So endothermic are organisms that regulate their own internal body temperature. So there are no cold-blooded mam mammals. All mammals are warm-blooded or endothermic. Third characteristic is that mammals have either hair or fur. And later this week in the lab, you're going to be learning more about the differences between hair and fur. But for the time being, we'll just say that mammals have either hair or fur. Now, some mammals have more hair and some mammals might have less hair, but all mammals do have at least a few strands of hair or fur. Number four, they bear their live young. And here is the characteristic that I was mentioning before that might be an exception to the rule, because as we talk about the different groups of mammals, we'll see one group of mammals that you might disagree with regarding this characteristic. But check out this picture here. Oh my goodness. We've got a cute little baby dolphin being born in the water. Isn't that just a beautiful sight? And as you can see, there is a fair amount of blood as well because birth does tend to be a process whereby blood is released. Now, some babies are very, very cute, like this baby dolphin. And I'm talking about uh, mammals in general, not just human beings. I mean, all baby humans are very cute. 
Well, that, that's what mothers would say. I've seen some pretty hideous looking babies, to be honest with you. But uh, but uh, some mammals produce babies that are awfully cute, whereas some mammals produce babies that may not even look anything like the adult form. And they may be rather hideous looking as well. But all mammals do bear live young. All right, the next characteristic, fifth characteristic here, is that mammals produce milk for their offspring. In fact, a little interesting tidbit of info here, the word mammal itself comes from this characteristic. You see, mammals, the female of each species, has glands called mammary glands. And it is the mammary glands from mother mammals that produce milk. And so that's where the word mammal comes from. We are mammals because our mothers have mammary glands that produced milk to feed us when we were young. And that is the case with all other mammals as well. So here are the five characteristics that mammals share with one another. They are vertebrates, warm-blooded or endothermic. They have hair or fur, and they bear live young. And finally, they produce milk for their offspring. Another interesting tidbit, I, I think humans are the only species of mammals that actually have a adult members of their species still drinking milk. Most other mammals, uh, in fact, I can't think of any other mammals that, that, uh, that do this, that, that drink milk as adults. Most other mammals are weaned off their mother's milk at a relatively early age. Why that is, I have no idea. It's just an interesting thing I was just thinking about. Okay, so there are the five characteristics. Be sure to study them. You will be quizzed upon them later in the week. Now let's transition to three different groups of mammals because not all mammals are the same. I already alluded to one group that has a different or at least an arguable characteristic of all other mammals here. But let's go through the three groups of mammals. They are the placental mammals, and you can see by this picture here, placental mammals contain the most variety or the greatest number of mammals. We as human beings are considered placental mammals, and we'll get to why that is later on. We have the marsupials, the second group of mammals like uh, kangaroos and and uh, koala bears and possum around here, and egg-laying mammals, which are the most rare and only found in Australia. So once again, three main types or groups of mammals include the, the monotremes, egg-layers, marsupials, pouched mammals, and the placental mammals, which have a placenta. So we're going to take a little time right now, and we're going to explore each of these three groups, and then we'll finish up here for today so I can show you some videos about these different groups of mammals, because they all have very unique characteristics. So let's begin with the monotremes. The monotremes. Here are some characteristics of monotremes. These are the most primitive of mammals, meaning that they are, uh, they have the simplest structures, their simplest physiology, if you will, and they've been around for a longer period of time than uh, other groups of mammals. But here's the weird thing about monotremes. They lay eggs. And I don't mean at that as a euphemism for uh, passing gas. I mean, they literally lay eggs like birds. Uh, some folks consider these transitional species. 
uh, that that may have some similar characteristics of birds as well as mammals. But in among them, we have the duckbill platypus and the echidna. Very interesting and unique organisms. In fact, if if you look at this picture up here, you, you will see that that is the hind leg of the duckbill platypus. Uh, another interesting characteristic of the platypus is that it is the only venomous mammal in the world. What do I mean by that? Well, the platypus actually produces venom like a snake does. That, that's pretty wild. I mean, you may think of that picture all the way over to the left and say, oh, look at how adorable that duckbill platypus is. Wouldn't you just want one for a pet in a fish tank and just cuddle up to it and let it crawl around? No, I don't think so. Because during mating season each year, the male duckbill platypus is rather vicious. I remember hearing on the news a few years ago that there was an Australian dude in the outback and uh, trying to get some pictures or videos of platypuses in the action of mating. So he, he basically went into their territory with uh, with equipped with nothing but a boomerang. Oh yes, and a an official Australian boomerang uh, as his only defense. He didn't think he would need any defenses against the platypus, but here's what happened. He was hiking along and got to the habitat of the platypus and he got between a male and a female platypus. Now here's the deal. The male platypus had his sights on the female platypus, and the female platypus was receptive to him coming over to mate with her. And this dude got in the way of things. It angered the male duckbill platypus. So the male platypus attacked the guy and grabbed a hold of his leg. Now, you have to keep in mind, a platypus is only about this big. They're not huge animals. But this platypus grabbed a hold of this dude's leg. And if you look at this picture up above, its hind feet have this venom-filled venom uh barb, I think it's called. And uh, it, it's like a nasty needle, a hypodermic needle, that when it was inserted into this guy's leg, the venom gland of the platypus just poured out this nasty venom into this dude. He, Long story short, he almost died. He was able to get help quick enough that they only had to amputate his leg. But if help hadn't arrived sooner, he would have been dead because he got in the way of a male and a female platypus ready to mate. So let that be a lesson to you. Don't get between a male and a female platypus when it's mating season. But isn't it interesting, though, that the male platypus has this venom gland? Uh, why? Well, do you really want to know? All right, I'll tell you why. Because during mating season, the male platypus normally would grab a hold of the female platypus and insert its venom into the female to subdue her, to relax her during the mating process. In other words, male platypuses they drug the female platypus in order to mate. Hmm, interesting. Now, the female platypus, because it's a member of the same species, obviously it does not kill the female platypus because that would, well, that would defeat the whole purpose of mating in the first place. But both duckbill platypuses and echidnas, when they are, when they have their eggs fertilized, their eggs are laid 
similar to bird eggs. It's really bizarre. So monotremes are the first group of mammals, a very interesting group of mammals, and very rare. We don't have any monotremes in North America where we live. You'll have to take a trip to Australia if you want to see, or to a zoo if you want to see a monotreme. All right, number two, the marsupials. Marsupials uh, are the second group of mammals, and they give birth to underdeveloped young. What does that mean? Well, they give birth to live young, but their youngins, if you will, are so young and so underdeveloped that they just can't be exposed to the external environment just yet. And so these marsupials, after they are born, they develop further in a pouch of their mother after birth. When I'm finished with the lesson here today, I'm going to show you a video of a possum with babies in the mommy's pouch. And you'll see how they develop even after birth in the pouch of their mother. So, so we've got the most uh, famous of all marsupials is the kangaroo. The kangaroo, and there are a variety of species of kangaroos that, uh, that develop the young kangaroos in the pouch of the mother, and then will finally emerge when they are old enough to hop around on their own. But we do have a marsupial here in North America where we live, and it's the possum. And the O is silent of the possum. So possum are marsupials. And again, I'll show you a video of that in a little while. So kangaroos, koalas, which are not bears, by the way, because bears are not marsupials. So koalas, possum, wombats, bandicoots, and gliders, sugar gliders are all examples of marsupials. There are more marsupials in the world than there are monotremes, but neither one of those groups can compare with our third group of mammals. Oh, wait, before I get to those, here's some other pictures here. Uh, we see the red kangaroo with a joey, the name of a baby uh, kangaroo, the sugar glider, the marsupial mole, the spotted tail native cat, native of Australia, the crest tailed marsupial mouse, the rumbat, the rumbat, ooh, the rumbat. Um, possum isn't on here, but these are all Australian marsupials. All right, the third group, the third group is by far the largest group of mammals, and it includes us. We are considered placental mammals. Why? Because placental mammals have the young developing inside the placenta. And what is a placenta? Well, a placenta is a structure inside the mother's abdomen in which uh, an embryo develops into a fetus, develops into a baby of whatever species you might be talking about. So here we have a picture of an elephant. And it's a cross section of an elephant mommy. And here's a baby elephant developing inside the placenta. Now, please keep in mind, the placenta is not the same thing as a stomach. Think about it. If, if you developed inside your mother's stomach, she would have digested you and pooped you out. And that's not what happens during birth. You're not pooped out a digestive system of your mother. You are uh, birthed through the birth canal from the placenta. By the way, speaking of stomachs and elephants, I have a, a question for you, a trivia question. Do you know how to get out of an elephant's stomach? If you were to be swallowed by an elephant, do you know how to get out of an elephant's stomach? Pause the video to see if you know the answer. Well, if you didn't know the answer, I'll tell you. To get out of an elephant's stomach, 
you run around until you get pooped out. But a bump. Think about it. Okay, let's move on. Enough bad jokes here about placental mammals. Another characteristic of placental mammals is that when they are born, they are born when their body is more developed. You can see the full characteristics of a more adult form of the mammal. Uh, but when the body is developed enough for birth, that's when birthing takes place. Now, in the case of many mammals, like the horse pictured here, when a horse is born it, within minutes, or a deer, or cows, many mammals, when they are born, it's it's really a mere matter of minutes or hours before that baby mammal is able to get up on its own power and run around on its own and be able to fend for itself more or less while it's feeding upon the mother's milk. Humans, on the other hand, you don't have baby humans being born and running around on their own. There is an extended period of time called infancy when humans are born, but humans are born with two arms, two legs, functioning senses, etc. Uh, and all of their organs are developed enough to exist outside the mother's womb. So we are placental mammals, but we don't develop quite as quickly as other mammals do. By the way, there's something called the gestation period. And the gestation period is the time period that a placental mammal develops inside the mother's womb or placenta. Do any of you know what the gestation period of humans is? If you said nine months, you're right. A mother will typically carry her young uh, her baby for nine months before it's born. Elephants, on the other hand, elephants, the gestation of an elephant is about two years. Wow. And the gestation period of different species varies pretty markedly. Generally speaking, the smaller the mammal, the faster the gestation period. The larger the mammal, the longer the gestation period. There's also some relationship between the intelligence or the size of the head and gestation period as well. So here we have it. We've gone over the five characteristics that all or most mammals possess. And we've gone over the three groups of mammals. And so we'll end with a great little picture of one of my favorite mammals, the sloth. And so, as we finish this first day of notes, we will say to the sloth by by